Well, good evening, everyone from all over the world. We are Pastors Leroy and Betty De Barnes. Betty Barnes. <laughs> what, you forgot your name? No, you didn't. <laughs> I know my name. But her name is Betty. Pastor Betty Barnes. <laughs> good evening, everyone. We have the mind of Christ. Yes, Amen. we do. Well, good evening, everyone. Praise we are so God. excited to be before you on tonight. And once again, we always like to say thank you for the privilege of allowing us to come into your homes. Thank you, So that we can, hey, Brother Dre, so we can minister the word of God to you. And there is a word from the Lord as well. But good evening, good evening, good evening. Email someone, text someone, let them know, Pastor Leroy and Betty Barnes. And the yes, Relentless Global are. Church family, we're on the air tonight ready to share and break the bread of life yes. so that you and I can be fed in Jesus' name. So good evening, all. Good evening. Thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you. It is such a privilege and an honor every time the Lord allows us to come and speak his word to his people. So we're so ever grateful. We decrease and increase in him, and we're so grateful for it. God bless you. Listen, on Sunday, our kids, our kids will be performing for us. And I'm telling you, we want the house packed because our Amen. kids are so Amen. precious to us. Our teachers has been working so diligently and just faithful to them, instilling the word of God into mm -hmm. their lives. And of course, uh, what they're going to do is a Sunday is a series of lessons that they will be presenting to us. And so we want everyone who can, Ms. please Shelley. come to our, uh, we have two services on Sunday at 8.30 and 10, but the presentation will take place at 10 a.m. And we okay. are looking forward for you to be in the house. Amen. So, Amen. so come on, be come on time church. and let's yes. support not only the children, but let's come so we can hear the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ. God so now you. we're going to, I think we, if, we, if we're able to do it tonight, Pastor Bader, we're going to close out this series on our midweek Bible study. Well, we so? entitled, <laughs> we'll see how it goes, we entitled so. uh, Overcoming Bitterness and Anger. Yes. And the, the Spirit of the Lord put this on my heart because there are so many people, saints of God, all over the world and who are struggling with stress, strains, and struggles mental of health. life, yeah. mental health, yes, yep. and, and the issues of life because life happens to us of all. Yes. But we can't allow things to harbor in our hearts and become bitter, our hearts bitter, or become angry about this, that, or the other. They did, they did this to me. She said that about me. Yes. Uh, the church told me no. That they, they did would let me sing my favorite song. Uh, my <laughs> wife disappointed me. My husband disappointed me. And what we don't realize is the enemy hmm. uses. Hey, Miss Vicky, California. God bless you. The enemy manipulates many of us. And it doesn't matter how old you are, young, middle aged, older. It doesn't matter the age. When you're hurt, you're hurt. When you're angry, you're angry. But we also learned that oh the Bible says you can be angry, but it has to be healthy. Yes. Be ye angry, but sin yeah. not. Yeah. And then we said there's a 24-hour turnaround. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Yeah. And so it's, it's, there's a healthy anger, but you should not let your anger turn into bitterness. Right. And what's the real issue that the enemy wants? He wants to block your heart yes, so yes. that your faith cannot work. He wants to block your heart oh so that your faith will fail fail. Yeah. And for us to be able to use our faith, it works through a pure and clean heart. So now let's look at what we closed with last mm -hmm. Wednesday. Bitterness yeah. causes physical challenges such yeah. as high blood pressure, sleep disorders, stress, uh, heart disease, digestive issues, much muscle tension, mm -hmm. uh, accelerating of your age. You, you look 20, you're 25, but you look 40 because you're so mad and angry about what your son or your daughter did that they broke your heart wow. and you haven't found a way to overcome it and you haven't allowed the Lord to heal your broken heart. Wow. Therefore, we are stressed and it's seen in our physical uh, bodies. So now, how do we overcome it? How do we change it? Recognize the issue, number one. Get help, counseling, talk to your pastors, uh, get an accountability partner, yes. confess your sins and repent. Get before God and ask God for forgiveness. Receive forgiveness. Yes. Amen. That's a good Receive one. Receive forgiveness. Yes. Uh, forgiveness. Yes. And then we close with Luke chapter 15 where we talked about the prodigal son. Okay. And we are, many of us know the issue with the prodigal son. He was young. He was immature. Couldn't handle wealth. And when he lost everything, he repented and came back to the father's house. Mm -hmm. The father opened up his heart to his son, said, hey, let's have a party. My son who is dead is now alive and he's living. Alive and he well. was lost and yes. now he's found. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. But then there's the older brother who was at home, and he was angry. He was bitter. Didn't care about his brother. Didn't care about the repentance. Didn't care about the forgiveness. All he saw was, you killed the fatty calf for, for this brother of mine who slept with harlots because they like to call you sins. 
and you didn't kill the fatty calf for me. And then we found out that the elder brother who was in the house, the elder brother who was obedient to the father, he still had issues just like the younger son. Wow. What was his issue as the older brother? He, he harbored resentment and anger in his heart against his brother. And his father let him know, hey, no, we can't do it that way. So what are some causes of bitterness? Childhood experiences. How you were raised. The loss of something important to you. Uh, negative relationships and influences. Sickness and disease. Debt. Hmm. Abandonment. How about this one? No vision. Wow. The Bible says uh, uh, that bitterness in the Greek is, is, is a word described as to wound by piercing. Hmm. So when you harbor bitterness and anger in your heart, watch this. You wound yourself and you pierce yourself. Wow. All right. Uh, Job 10 and 1. Job 10 and 1. Let's look wow. at this one. My soul loathes my life. I will give free course of my complaint. Watch what Job says. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. So how is bitterness manifested as well? By the words you declare. Yeah, they did it to you, but you're telling the whole world. Wow. Yeah, they did it to you, but you got it all on Facebook. Wow. Yeah, they did it to you, but you're calling their boss, their co-workers. You're calling their ex-husband, their ex-wife. And you're, you, you're, you don't realize you're harboring bitterness in your heart. My God. God's word likens bitterness to a root hidden under the surface. It grows quietly in the wound of your heart and it's undetected. Wow. But watch what the Bible says. Like the bitter waters of Merah and under the Israelites, Merah, which is Exodus 15 and 23, its true nature is unknown until someone tastes the bitterness. Ooh. They didn't know the water was bitter until they drank it. Oh well, we don't know that you're bitter until you come against us or you attack us or you attack our character oh and you, your anger starts exploding all over the place. And instead of restoration, instead of forgiveness, you're out for blood. That is not the will of God. Wow. Watch this. Bitterness is a choice. Can everybody write that one down? Let that be the first thing we write. Bitterness is a choice okay. A decision not to respond to a situation through God's grace. God. Proverbs 17 and 25. Wow. Proverbs 17 and 25. A foolish son brings grief to his father oh and bitterness to the mother who bore him. When you don't commit your life to God, when you are not repentant, when you don't deal with your true issues of life and get some help, yeah. then you bring bitterness to those that are connected to your life. Wow. What are the consequences of bitterness? Mm. It troubles you. Wow. What are the consequences of bitterness? Mm. It troubles others that are around you. Oh bitterness is contagious and spreads like an epidemic. Wow. Amen. Absalom, <laughs> King David's son, that's uh, jo uh, Absalom. That's, uh, where, where, did I write my scripture down? No, I didn't write that scripture down. Where Absalom, which is King David's son, he was jealous of his father. He was bitter and angry against his father because he wanted to be king. And what did he do? He betrayed, he be, he betrayed his father and kicked his father out and became king. But eventually, the bitterness in his heart had him killed. He, killed, he ended up killing himself because of the bitterness that was in his heart. Amen. Well, let's look at this tonight. Let's, let's look at a scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. What is the cure? Let's see if we can close that. What is the cure for bitterness? Number one, and I said it on a couple of uh, Wednesdays ago, the answer to all bitterness and anger is to forgive. Yes. It's to forgive. Wow. Everybody right say the answer is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Amen. Romans 12, verse 17. Let's look at what Paul wrote to the church at Rome. Repay no one evil for evil. Mm -hmm. Don't don't have evil in your heart and then pay overtime. <laughs> don't, don't harbor evil in your heart and then you have to pay some overtime. Oh my goodness. Watch this. Repay no one, no, no one, one no evil one. for evil. Yes. Have regard for good things, good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, be at peace with all men. That's right. Beloved, uh -huh. so you know he's talking to the church. Uh -huh. Do not avenge. Avenge means to inflict harm. Do not avenge yourselves, but rather play, give place for wrath. Amen. For it is written, vengeance, punishment, or restitution 
Vengeance is mine, retribution, excuse me, retribution. Uh -huh. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So what is the answer? Forgive. Amen. Forgive. Right. This is important. Yes. Get along with God and pray. Yes. Get on your knees and repent. Amen. And ask the Lord to forgive you. The Bible says not only that, it says if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him the drink. For in so doing you, he calls upon his head. Uh, 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 what does that mean? It means to call someone to feel remorse by returning good for evil. Amen. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. good. Overcome evil with good. Yeah. So you're going to do it through the spirit of forgiveness. If I'm mad at my enemy, but I feed him. If I'm mad at my enemy, but I give him water. I am showing mercy and extending grace instead of holding right. it in my heart. Yes. I choose to show love, right. goodness, and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Listen to this quote. C.S. Lewis C.S. Lewis said this. Okay. Everyone says that forgiveness is, is a lovely idea until they until they have something. What's this? Until they have something to forgive. Let me read it again. C.S. Lewis, everyone says that forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have something to forgive. Wow. Amen. <laughs> so number one, the cure for, forgive, uh, 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 for overcoming bitterness and anger is forgiveness. Number two, don't be vindictive. Don't vindicate. The Bible already said to let God give the vengeance, not you and I. Yes. Proverbs 24 and 29. Hey, Brother Robert, good, good evening. Proverbs 24, 4, verse 29. Do not say, I will do to him just as he has done to me. I will render to the man yes. according to his works. What is yes. that? Evil yes. for evil. Yes. So don't, don't be do vindictive. Yes. Don't take revenge. Everybody yes. say that. Don't take revenge. Don't take revenge. Number two, God doesn't take it on us, so we Ooh. shouldn't take it on others. Yes, that's Number so three. Good. It will turn into, it will turn your, your vindictiveness, it will turn into spiritual and emotional turmoil. You will have issues all the days of your life if you don't let it go and learn to forgive. And don't let bitterness take root in your heart. Yes. Lastly, you will ultimately destroy yourself. I, I don't know why I thought about this today. I remember Anna Nicole Smith. Uh, was 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 a, was a stripper who married a billionaire named J. Howard Marshall, and then when he married uh, he married him a year later he died. Mm -hmm. Well, she got millions of dollars, but the brother or the son of J. J. Howard Marshall was bitter and angry against Anna Nicole Smith, and they went through a battle for five years over millions of dollars. But watch what ended up happening: she died, her son died, and the son of the billionaire died. They all died because of bitterness, hatred, and anger. They all died. Bitterness and anger destroys you. Wow. And that's why we got to get it out of our hearts. That's why we have to ask for forgiveness. Yes. That's why we got to ask the Amen. comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit yes. to come upon us and heal our broken hearts. Broken hearts. Yes. So the cure you, for overcoming bitterness, number one, is to forgive. Number two, don't be vindictive. Yes. Number three, Reconciliation over worship. Reconciliation. Let's go for reconciliation. Restoration. Amen. Matthew 5 verse 25. Matthew 5 verse 25. Amen. Therefore, hmm. if you bring your gift to the altar, to the church, your tithes, your offerings, and those things, and remember that you have ought against your brother, verse 24, leave your gift there at the altar and go your way, first be reconciled to your brother, then come back and offer your gift. And Jesus uh, is using this illustration of reconciliation. Not You know you have an issue with your dad. You know you have an issue with your mom. You know you have an issue with your children. You know there's an issue. But if you don't deal with the issues of life and, and bring restoration, reconciliation, it will turn into anger. Anger turns into bitterness. And what is, what's the end result? Bitterness destroys you. Yes. So Jesus is saying, 
reconciliation over your worship. Not even your worship and your gift giving is of any value to God if you have all against your brother. So if you're mad at your dad, mad at your mom, mad at your children, mad at your co-worker, if you have bitterness against the ex-husband, the ex-wife, and all these people, listen to me, then why would you go to church and worship God? The Bible says, why would you worship and say, I love a God who I've never seen, but I see my brother every day, and yet I have all against my brother and my sisters. My People of God, that is not the will of God. No. Everybody say, get it right. Get it right. Come on, let's get it right. Get it right. Number four, become a peacemaker. Amen. How do you overcome bitterness and anger? Choose to be a peacemaker. Matthew 5 and 9. Matthew 5 and 9. Blessed empowered to prosper. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. For they shall be called the sons of God. Well, what's a peacemaker? A mediator. Mm -hmm. A negotiator. Wow. A moderator. A broker. What do all these people have in common? They bring peace. They bring restoration. Wow. They, 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 they are problem solvers. Oh, I like that. Right, right, say, say yes. problem solver. Problem solver. Matthew 7 and 12, a, 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 a peacemaker. Matthew mm -hmm. 7 and 12. That's good. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. To them. Yeah. For this is the law and the prophets. Amen. You, you <laughs> this is so beautiful. <laughs> if you want to be respected, uh. so respect. Yes. If you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. Yes. If you want to be forgiven, give forgiveness. Yes. You reap what, what you sow. sow. Yes, so if there's something you have in your heart against your husband or your wife, quickly go say, say, honey, forgive me. Yes. I was wrong. Yes. Honey, forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. Uh -huh. Honey, forgive me. I know things have been tough around the house. I know we're going through a financial challenge. I know we're going through this. But listen, as the head of the house, men of God, yes. we got to go to our wives and secure them and say, hey, forgive me. I'm going to step my game up. I'm going to spend my time with the Lord. Yes. I'm going to ask forgiveness against things I have against you and against my family members, against the church, against the pastor, whatever it may be. But I know I got to make it right. How can two walk together except they agree? Amen. So to overcome bitterness and anger, number one, forgive. Number two, don't be vindictive. Stop having an attitude against your spouse. Wow. When you know, you're, in, in particular, when you know you're wrong. Oh my gosh. Number three, reconciliation and restoration. Yes. Number four, become a peacemaker. Amen. Amen. And lastly, number five, let's go after the goodness of God. Shalom, the peace of God. Let's yes. go after goodness. I don't, I don't want to be mad at my wife. I don't want to That's argue right. with my husband. Right. I don't want to be dis disgruntled with my children. Right. I want to go after the peace, the peace shalom of God. God. I am a peacemaker. Come on. Yes. Everybody write back and say, I am a peacemaker. I am a peacemaker. So the last one tonight as we close. Mm. Number five, yes. repay with goodness. If you're going to get back at somebody, <laughs> repay with the goodness oh, of the Lord. True. Yes. Come Let's look on. at three scriptures and we'll be done for tonight. Okay. First Thessalonians. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. That's Overcoming true. bitterness and anger. Man, Pastor Ben, I'm telling you, you'll be surprised when I have people call me and they're mad at the, uh, someone who has passed on. Yes. He hurt me. I understand it. But he can't hurt you anymore. Right. Ex-husbands in particular, ex-boyfriends and ex-girlfriends and so on and, and the like. They didn't pay their child support. He didn't step up. They left me. They hurt me. They abandoned me. I understand that they did it. But don't allow bitterness and resentment to take root in your heart yes. because it only destroys you. you. Yes, it does. So let's look what Paul, the Apostle Paul said to the Thessalonica church. Mm -hmm. See that no one renders evil for evil mm. to anyone wow. to anyone that's what paul said i hope you got your bibles open he says see that no one the no saints one. of god yes. render evil for evil yes. tit for tat huh. but always pursue what is good yes. both to yourselves and Thank to god. your brothers and sisters in christ yes. he said but always, always pursue what is good Go, what, what 
does the word pursue mean? To go after, to, to go follow, after. to chase, <laughs> to hunt. Yes. What what does good mean? A goodness mean virtuous, yes. righteousness, mm -hmm. upright. It means ethical. ethical. You're going to do what's right. Watch because this. It's because it's right. <laughs> so I'm going to receive the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, That's verse 14. Good. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Amen. The word pursue is to go after. It means to follow, chase, hunt, or to, it, it means to pursue of something with, with you, passion. You're going after this with passion. Yes. But watch what the he Hebrews says. Mm. Pursue peace with all people okay. and holiness Amen. for without which no man shall see the Lord. No man. Can you imagine this? No man. That you live your whole life. And when we say don't see the Lord, it doesn't mean you're not saved. Mm. It means you won't sense his presence on the earth. Mm. When, when it's time for you to pray, you won't sense his presence on you. Oh there, there will be a withdrawal of the presence of God on your life because you're not walking in holiness. You're not walking in shalom. You're not walking in love because it's hard to love people you say you, you, say you hate. It's hard to love people that you can't stand because they did this to me. They wow. did that to me. They said this about me and I won't let it go. But because you won't let it go, you can't receive peace. Wow. Amen. Wow. Lastly on tonight, Romans chapter 12, verse 9. We're talking about repay with goodness. Mm -hmm. Can y'all write that back to Pastor? Repay, repay with goodness. With goodness. Let love, see, see the, first, the first scripture I read was, was to pursue goodness. The second scripture was Let pursue love. peace. Pursue. Now watch this last one. Let love be without hypocrisy. Mm. Abhor what is evil. What does abhor mean? Disgust, mm. hate, or detest. Mm. So hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Ooh. What Cling means hold on tightly to it means to get a good grip. Yes. It means to clutch or to embrace. So what are we saying here? Let love be without hypocrisy. Cleave to what is good. Right. If I'm going to overcome my bitterness, the pain mm -hmm. of my past, oh, I'm going to do it with the goodness of the Lord. So my last quote, listen to this last quote and we're, we're done. Most of us can forgive and forget. We just don't want the other person to forget we forgave. <laughs> and you don't want to, you want to do it in love. In other words, oh my you, 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 I forgive you for what you did, yeah. but I don't want you to forget I, I forgave you. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to do it with the spirit of love. Amen. Forgive. Amen. Forgive, my brother. Oh my Sisters in the Lord, forgive. Forgive. Forgive your dad. Forgive your husband. Forgive the ex-wife. Forgive. Forgive your son. I know he hurt you. Forgive your daughter. I know she hurt you. Forgive your parents. I know they didn't do this, that, or the other. It's okay. The Lord is your source. The Lord is your portion. Portion For this purpose and for this cause came out into the world so he can bring you healing. Is there any balm in Gilead? That's what the psalmist said. Yes, there's some balm in Gilead. His name is Jesus. And he came to show forth love to you so that in the place of your bitterness, in the place of your anger, he will give you his love. I, I love this scripture. He says, my peace I give to you. Yes. Not as the world has given, but my peace I give to you. That you can experience the love and the peace of Jehovah. You can rest tonight. You can, you can, you can have sweet sleep tonight. If you can trust in the living God and to forgive those who have hurt you. To let it go. Everybody say, let it go. Let it go. To let it go. And you can live life. You don't want to, you don't want to. You don't want heart problems. You don't want stress. Amen. You don't want all this on your life because yes. of what someone has done. Listen, we've all been there. Yes, we have. We've all been hurt. Yes, Join the hurt club. We've all been hurt. <laughs> we've all been betrayed. We've all been lied to. Some of us have been used. I mean, hey, it happens. But we live life. We learn from our mistakes. But this is what we also do. We forgive. Jesus said it so purely and so clearly. Don't even bring your offerings. He said it, God won't receive it. You can bring your tithes and your offerings to the house of God. That will bless the house of God. But it won't bless you because you're harboring anger and maliciousness against those 
uh, who have betrayed you and hurt you. But this is not the will of God. This is a word tonight of healing. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. This is a word tonight to heal your broken heart, to restore your mind to peace Amen. so that you can rest. The end result of being healed from bitterness is shalom, peace, it's rest. And this is your covenantal right. I declare it. I decree it over your life. Be healed, be made whole, be restored. Receive the spirit of the love of Jesus. Receive, receive the spirit of peace from Jesus and receive the wholeness of the Lord. Like Jesus said to the woman with the issue of blood, your faith has made you whole. And because you received this word tonight on overcoming bitterness and anger, may the Lord make you whole in Jesus' name. Everybody write back and say, I received that. I received Glory that. be to God. Amen. Come on, let's see those hand claps. That you, shall Lord conclude Jesus. this series oh, on overcoming bitterness and anger. We give you praise on tonight. Amen. Go to our praise website, www.relentlessglobalchurch.org. You can give your tithes, offerings, and gifts of love, gift to make a difference, our building project. You can support us. Our friends of ours continue to do so. We thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to reach out to us, our email address is info at relentlessglobalchurch.org. Office number is 713-936-6848. Lastly, our mailing address is RGC, P.O. Box 2202 Houston, Texas, 77252. So God bless you. This uh, Saints of God, Brother Robert, I see you. Uh, <laughs> Teresa, God bless you all. Baby, call some names. Who else was out there? Monty and Jeff, always. The, Amen. The, the Banks family. The Celeste. Amen. Jared, we love you, man of God. We appreciate you all Praise so very God. much for joining us all tonight. Hey, Miss Colleen, we love you always. And let's hit the share button. Let the maple. God bless the maple household. And uh, hit the share button. Because there is somebody, hey, Miss Betty, there is someone out there, someone connected to your Facebook page. Miss Ruby, we love you. Uh, someone connected to your Facebook page, someone connected to your life who needs this message of hope that there is healing. You can be made whole from the inside out. Praise God. Dr. Betty, any more last words? I just want to thank God for this series. It's so many people that uh, needs to hear this. We ask that you press that share button so that people can be blessed yes, by the yes. word of God. Yes, yes. It's the word of God. You may be trying to communicate something to someone, but let me tell you, they don't receive it because, you know, it's just kind of like hidden against the brick. <laughs> but I'm telling you, we pray that this word will Love touch you, their Wendy. lives and that change will take place. Amen. And that God gets the glory. Amen. We don't have to say, hey, you know, this is what you need to do. Listen, 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 listen. I'm telling you, just allow the, mm -hmm. the word of God just to cook and simmer and, and change the life. So we are so grateful Amen. for you taking our time to press the share button and send we it to people. We truly appreciate that. Amen. Amen. And remember, Relentless Global Church is where? Love, Love reigns. reigns. Shalom to all of you. We will see you all on this coming Sunday, 830 service, 10 o'clock yeah. service. Be on time. Our children will be performing and yes. doing their thing on oh, Sunday. We're looking forward come, to that. Come. So I invite your grandma. Grandma, Grandpa, and family 80s, members. Yes, <laughs> Amen, Miss Maddie. We love you, baby. We're so excited. We are so excited. And we're we looking so forward precious. to that. So, yes. God bless you all. Rest well tonight. We declare and decree the blessing of the Lord rest upon you. We declare the goodness of the Lord shall follow you, chase you, overtake you Woo! this week. The rest of your week Glory is God. shalom. Yes, it is. Good night, all. Receive. We'll see you all on Sunday. Receive we love it. you. Shalom. God Good night, bless all. You. Bye bye. Good night.